everyone. Welcome to Cartoon Network Studios Career Spotlight Series, where we dive deeper into the various jobs that make up a TV animation studio. This is the animation direction for TV animation panel. This panel, we are going frame by frame to break down animation direction and sheet timing for TV animation at Cartoon Network. My name is Jesse Juano and I'm part of the talent development team here at Cartoon Network and I'll be moderating this panel along with my team. So if you have any questions for our panelists, please click on the Q&A button below and write them in. Uh, we'll try to get to those questions in the later half of this webinar. So without further ado, uh, Kimson and Sarah, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, could you please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your background? Crazy. Kimson, would you care to go first? <laughs> Sarah would be my guest. Oh, okay. So sweet. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Giancarelli. Um, I'm an animation director, uh, sheet timer, timing director, the all the above uh, for Cartoon Network Studios. Um, I've been in the animation industry for 15 years now. Um, I got my start in Flash, so I transitioned into uh, the style of uh, a Korean pipeline for uh, TV animation, and I never looked back. But it's a, it's a really exciting job, um, and I, I enjoy it every day. Very lucky. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> uh, I'm Kim Sin Albert. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a supervising animation director currently at Cartoon Network. Uh, I'm on uh, um, Adventure Time Distant Lands and uh, worked on OKKO, a few other uh, properties here at Cartoon Network, a few other shows. I started 27 years ago on Beavis and Butthead as a layout artist, studied animation back in New York. Um, so I also went through the, tr the flash transition going from paper to digital and then um, ended up uh, my first uh, uh, animation direction gig was on the Venture Brothers for Adult Swim uh, years ago. And so, yeah, here we are. Yay. Uh, about to <laughs> reveal the secrets. Frame yeah. Frame. And didn't we also Demystify. kind of all work together on Venture Brothers? Sorry, what's that? I said, didn't we almost work together on Venture Brothers? I think I was an intern when. Yes. <laughs> you yes. were we an intern. We crossed paths. Yes, we did cross paths. <laughs> It all comes full circle. We do it. <laughs> well, so let's get started, guys. What is an animation director and how is it different from episodic directing? Big question. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Sarah, why don't you take a crack at that? Okay. Um, animation direction is we're primarily directing the actual animation. We're not overseeing the story. We're not overseeing the storyboards or the designs or anything. We're strictly looking at how we can tell the overseas studio how to best, to our judgment at the time, <laughs> animate the episodes and the characters um, so that when they actually get all the information in the package from us to actually proceed forward, they kind of have a roadmap kind of follow so that they know what kind of acting and movement we're looking for. <laughs> I think it's the, probably the most succinct way of describing it. So we, we primarily deal with the actual acting animation and then the fixes that come back once we have like a rough drawing and a rough animation, a cut of the animation episode once it's back in like, it's, you know, in whatever I think is like the four month time frame usually. So... <laughs> Um, and in addition to that, we also uh, handle the lip sync and kind of the, yeah. so we basically breathe life into the, into the drawings that are basically mm -hmm. at that point still in a storyboard format. And, um, yes. and then the difference between an episodic director, the episodic director usually is still working with a storyboard team uh, and, and has their own episode that they're doing. They're working off the script. They're, they're working off uh, uh, maybe the, the record, the, the, the vocal, maybe they did a radio play. And then they're working with the supervising director who is overseeing, you know, how the, how the shows are, or that episode is being put together in the storyboard and making sure the shots are. So it's still in the kind of the boarding department, but also um, mm -hmm. they influence a lot of you know they can rearrange some some shots and some story a lot of the time they're molding that so mm -hmm. they're dealing much more with the with the storyboard um side of things we're strictly dealing with movement and sound 
and um, and once we send it up to the overseas studio, they're looking at our work to translate um, the the storyboard and the uh, design that were from the design department and from the storyboard department. And we our department is at the nexus of like three different departments, and we're kind of <laughs> at the end of the assembly line so we get all this information we take it all together and then we map it out so that the overseas studio is able to literally animate the timing that we give them and um so that's that's where we come in and our magic is expressed i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> that's really cool and i feel like uh definitely not a lot of webinars talk about this uh so thank you guys for <laughs> Taking this, might the time. The only, this might be the only webinar in the history of webinars. That no. this no. is I'm <laughs> happy to have this information and share it and give, have it out there so people know. Um, yeah, sure. Well, you know, so I've been in animation for quite a while and you, you hear, you know, they, you know, job titles like sheet timer and checker. Uh, what are those jobs and how do you all work together? Um, well, um, yeah. I think probably the first step of our job is the X sheets, which is usually what a sheet timer is. And depending on the studio and everything you work for, some animation directors are required to do sheets, some only do sheets, some do a little sheets, some just, you know, supervise and look over a team of other animation directors that will do sheets. Um, it really changes based on the production and what studio you're working for. Um, but Sheets, sheets are a roadmap, basically. It's a big, long sheet. I think, um, Kimson, uh, maybe now is a good time to show what an X sheet looks like. Sure. It's basically a visual representation of, thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> but it's like a, it's a visual representation of film score, basically, um, where you're seeing a sheet with every frame of the actual uh, show marked. So all of those vertical lines are a frame of the animation that are numbered corresponding to the storyboard and this, the sound that we're given with the dialogue and everything. And it's all pre-exposed um, with dialogue and sound before an animation director gets to it. But, you know, every one of those frames has to be accounted for. So that's what, you know, a sh sheet timing on an X sheet is, is where looking at cues on an animatic uh, listening to the dialogue, thinking of what the acting that needs to happen, and we mark these X sheets um, appropriately so that, you know, Korea knows that we want the character to move into pose B when they start their line, and, you know, when the sound effect hits, this is, you know, that's when the boulder falls and hits the ground kind of thing. So, for sheet timers, their primary job is focusing on just marking all of that animation for this specific episode. And, um, uh, it gets a little more nuanced once you, you know, progress further, but I think you're better able to speak for that, Kinson. <laughs> well, I was just going to go over this, like, like Sarah was saying, we're just jumping right into it. This is the format yeah. that we use to lay out our, our, what we do. So essentially, it literally is writing and numbers. And this is kind of a science. It's not as, um, how would you say, like, uh, uh, fantastical or you know artistic although it's very artistic but in a different mm -hmm. way as like looking at pictures and everybody can see the the screen share yeah I just want to make sure yes okay yes good. so um so here we have the Cartoon Network's um, exposure sheet and so this is our act it's basically broken down into columns these are our action columns this is our dialogue column this is the uh it's EXP for exposure, but this is basically where we put the mouths, the mouth positions. And then these are actually just columns that the overseas studio will use. And sometimes they use them, but now because it's digital, they most of the time they don't really use like literally this sheet of paper that we would send them back in the day. Now it's all kind of digital. So, and then here in this column, we will have our camera moves or, you know, anything from a dissolve or anything that, uh, that technically back in the day would be done in camera. So we have these various columns, and like Sarah was saying, um, each of these lines here is a frame. And so uh, one sheet is basically 80 frames. And so 80 frames corresponds to about three and change seconds of, uh, of footage. 
And also, uh, this is five feet of mm -hmm. literally five feet of footage. If we were on using an old school kind of like measurement, um, when you measured 35 millimeter film, this 80 frames and 35 millimeter film was five feet. So we know the footage, literally how long each scene is, how many frames they are, and this plays into a lot when we're doing post-production as well. But um, so this is a blank exposure sheet, and this is what, you know, uh, is we basically is the background for what we do our, um, our magic on. And um, uh, so, yeah, and then, I'm gonna stop this for a quick second. Um, so Jesse, what was the, uh, there was a second part to the question, was it? Oh my, oh my. Uh, uh, hers. Oh, checkers, we work with checkers. Oh, yeah. checkers, how do we work with checkers? So as, as you can imagine, uh, we do this for every scene. Some shows have, you know, 200 and some scenes. We give the, all this, uh, what we call exposed sheets to the checker who will review what we do and take a look at the design pack. So what the design department did, what the storyboard department did, and then what the, the animation directors did, and look at it and preview to make sure that they all jive so that when we do send it over to the overseas studio that, you know, the different departments, once it gets overseas, are able to look at and, and it jives as well. So, so sometimes the checkers, um, I've had some amazing, we have an amazing checker here at, at Cartoon Network, and sometimes the checkers are, uh, um, they're kind of funny with their comments or, you know, they'll be like, oh, pose three missing or, some, you know, sometimes we forget certain things and, mm -hmm. and uh, the checker is really necessary to be an extra set of eyes to look at our work after we're done with it. Um, yeah, so that's what a checker does. But most of the time a checker has, is familiar with exposure sheets and probably has done timing and has done animation direction um, before. So um, mm -hmm. it's very kind of familiar. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. a really useful right. job to, to have in the process because we're so in our heads doing this stuff all the time. Like, it's so easy to miss things. It's kind of embarrassing how easy it is to miss stuff sometimes. So. Well, that's why they're there to help uh, to check. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so can you guys tell me a little bit about, like, what your day-to-day -day is like? And can you show, show some examples? <laughs> Aha. <laughs> As I say, I think Kimson's equipped for this one. <laughs> so um, usually, when we get uh, our materials, the uh, main materials that we focus or that we work with, again, we're at the end of kind of a, a, an assembly line of three different departments. So we're getting the storyboard, we're getting the exposure sheets without exposure on them, but with lip sync, and the lip sync comes from uh, the animatic. So we're basically using those materials. And so I'm gonna share my screen again, and I will show you an example of what we get um, and how we kind of use them. And if I get too much in the weeds, <laughs> because it's pretty technical <laughs> stuff, it's kind of like, you know, Sarah, jump in at any moment to- Sure. Uh, I mean, make it a little more accessible. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so. Guys, it looks like math homework. <laughs> okay, so we're going back. <laughs> exactly. So we're going back to um, the materials. This is the blank exposure sheet. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to share uh, some materials from our favorite show, OKKO. Yay. Yay. Right. Yay. So this is a storyboard. Um, for, we're going to focus on scene three of the episode We Got Hacked, which is a great episode. It has a lot of glitchy effects and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, also streaming now on HBO Max. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> good plug, so, good plug, good job. Scene three, okay. Um, basically what we have here is a storyboard. Uh, we have the animatic. And then here we're going to have the exposure sheet for scene three. Now this exposure sheet has already been exposed, meaning the action has been done on it. Um, what we normally get when we first get the exposure sheet is, I hope you guys can see this, is literally just this column. So what mm -hmm. this is, this column right here are the phonetics 
of the voice from the animatic broken down into frames. So I know that at this frame, this is a woof sound. So this is saying, watch out all, here comes the, right? And then it keeps going down here. So I'm gonna actually ask Jackie to share uh, the animatic scene so we can see what we're what we're working with. Is that okay, Jackie? Yeah, I think we'll be good. Uh, did you want to show the boards first? Uh, I want to do that after the. Uh, I want to do that after the um, the animatic. Mm -hmm. Actually, sure. I think you need to stop sharing first so that. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jackie. Dirt exterminator! Watch out, all! Here comes the Dirt Exterminator with the star of today's session, the Power Mop! Can you play it one more time, Jackie? Please, thank you. Watch out, all! Here comes the Dirt Exterminator with the star of today's session, the Power Mop! <laughs> Thank you. All right, so um, hopefully you guys all got that. So mm -hmm. basically, we have KO here. I have my animatic. We have KO going through a bunch of poses, talking. And so here we have our animatic. And then let's look at the storyboard. Here we have the poses for the scene with the text underneath. And we see that he's changing poses and positions and expressions. And if you look at the, oh, and then at the end, we have a camera move, a truck out here. So you guys can see this at the end when he pulls out the mop, there's a truck out. So everything that, that's on the board corresponds to the animatic here. You can see that um, the poses are the same. Um, in the animatic, they're timed out to the track. So what happens is, uh, as animation directors, we're going to get a blank exposure sheet, again, with the dialogue broken down in the frame. And on the storyboard, what I have are the secret panel numbers over here. If you can see, this panel number is one, this panel number is two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at how those panels fall in the scene according to these numbers over here uh, in this northeast corner over here. So these numbers are the footage numbers. So if I'm stepping through the animatic, I go, oh, I noticed that at, seven, at about 18 feet, it changes from that pose to that pose, right? So now I have to find that pose. Oh, look, it's between pose four and pose five. So now I'm gonna go to, 18, and here it is, wait, 18, right? I don't know. Yep. Oh, you know what? They reuse the same panel. Look at that. It's actually pose three. <laughs> anyway, here we go. I find pose three, which is this pose, it's this pose on the animatic, it's this pose on the exposure sheet. And I know that it's set 18, but I look at, whoops, sorry. <laughs> I look at uh, 18 and I see pose three here. So I hope I didn't put everybody to sleep, but, <laughs> but basically I'm, I'm using mm -hmm. these two materials, um, focusing on this number here, focusing on this number, the panel number, the footage number, and then finding that panel number and footage number on my exposure sheet, making sure it syncs up with the, with the uh, dialogue that's here. And then I'm putting down the actual direction. So this is what we do. I'm exposing some action with X's and giving slight direction, uh, slight antic down. For example, this is direction to give KO a little antic down before he points up and looks forward into pose three, and we want to make sure that he's hitting this pose when he says this line, here it comes. Mm -hmm. So this is a very simple example, a very simple action. 
And um, this is like what we do with mm -hmm. up to 200 scenes an episode if we have to. <laughs> uh, so we're giving, again, we're going to add uh, the movement. We're going to use the panels from the storyboard and make sure that they coordinate to how the panels are laid out in the animatic. So mm -hmm. um, anything else, Sarah? Did I miss anything? Yes. So I think aside from, you did a beautiful job of explaining that, by the way, Kimston. Um, <laughs> well done. But um, this, this part here where we're exposing and writing the actual action on the sheets is where the animation part of our job comes in because we're basically animating without drawing it. So a lot of these markings falls on us as people with animation background because we know like we can look at the scene, we can understand the style of the show, we can understand the mood of the scene, we can understand what the acting of the character needs to be. We can look at these poses and be like, oh, does this warrant an antic? Is this better off as an overshoot or is it a better slow in? Like it, it, it allows us to take our experience as animators and then be able to imagine what this is supposed to look like. And that is what we end up writing down on these pages. So that way, you know, when it comes back, it's like, oh, wow, he looks energetic and excited like he's supposed to be. <laughs> and everything is all right with the world. <laughs> And I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna highlight the, this is an example over here, if you can call it my cursor. This is a camera truck out. So truck out means that we're zooming out, or zooming away from the character. And that would be referring to this, this end panel in nine. And mm -hmm. you see that this is pose A, which is where the camera started, which is basically the same camera position as here. And then we widen to pose B. So we're indicating this is how quickly the camera truck out is into pose or into, mm -hmm. yeah, into camera pose B. And mm -hmm. so we see that he's pulling the mop into panel uh, from behind him in panel nine. And here's panel nine where he pulls the mop. And then on the animatic, same thing, he pulls, he pulls the mop. And so there's that truck out there. So it all corresponds. And um, I think one of the, the great things in our, in our job is how well we can fill in a lot of blanks. And sometimes the storyboard doesn't have extra poses. And sometimes we're the ones to kind of plus some poses. We add blinks. We definitely add the um, mouth coding. So that's another thing that we do. Um, mm -hmm. I can show you this uh, really quick. But the mouth coding is basically assigning mouth positions to uh, the exposure sheets to those phonetics that I was explaining before. And um, I'm just going to share our mouth chart uh, very quickly. And so that you guys can see what mouth coding looks like. And um, so this is a KO mouth chart. And so you can see that these mouth positions, so it goes from very closed to very open to, to going into an ooh kind of mouth. And then this is a, a, a teeth over lips for kind of a, a, a F sound. And then this is an, a, a tongue for under, uh, if you're gonna do like a library, for example. And then this is a, a flip tongue, which is a TH sound. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, this is a mouth coding kind of system that we use. And we take the A, B, C, D, E, and all, all the way through L, and what we do is we assign them in this column. So this sound would correspond to a C mouth, which is this mouth. And then when you run all this together, then you, basically even if we just had the mouth moving to this, it would be lip synced already. Mm -hmm. So uh, every, every show has, each character has a mouth chart like this. And so as animation directors, we get familiar with them and we are able to do our lip sync. I like to do my lip sync right away. I like to do it, like I, I like to lip sync my section, you know, top to bottom right away so that um, I'm familiar with the material and, and you, get to, you get to hear the acting and the voice. That's another thing is like, we're trying to plus the acting and the voice. If, if Ko's yelling the way he is in that scene, we wanna use expressive wider mouths. We're not gonna use smaller kind of closed mouths. So. It really helps to know the, the way the, the mouth chart works. 
for each character. Mm -hmm. So, so that's basically that. In a nutshell, and mind you, that was very fast. And, <laughs> oh, that was know, great. Thank you. It was very, very fast and very. We glossed over a few things. Um, you know, it's still the secret science. We don't want to give it all away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we see um, the final? Uh, what it yes. looks like in final animation? Japanese so, assuming we did everything right and it got checked and we sent it overseas to the studio, in this case it was, uh, I'm not sure if it was, uh, it was a Korean studio, I'm not sure if it was Sun Min or Eve Mation. Um, but Jackie, can you play the work print for this? Watch out all! Here comes the Dirt Exterminator with the star of today's session, the Power Mop! Watch out all! Here comes the Dirt Exterminator! with the star of today's session, the Power Mop. Let me see if uh, if I can play it. Um, yeah, go for you, it. You guys won't hear the sound, but it's a, it's, yeah, it's a pretty big thing, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so no sound. Here is the word print. And here, over here, we have scene three. So we know that this is scene three. Uh, let me know if this works, if it plays better. Hmm. Still looking a little laggy. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe it's the connection. <laughs> sorry, guys, but yeah, sorry about I think that. we get the, they can watch the uh, episode on HBO yeah, Max, it's, so. It's, 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 <laughs> It's true. Yeah, so, and actually, when I looked when I looked at that footage, I think we did some retakes on that one anyway. <laughs> so it's better to watch the final. But uh, no, that, I mean, anyway, I think you guys get the idea. It's almost like we're making uh, some sort of I don't know either a car. I like to think of it as like making donuts or a car, and we're adding layers to, you know, the finished product at the end. But essentially, when it comes back from from the overseas studio, that's what we're getting. We're just getting. Um, the animation and we sync it up to the sound again and then they take it in the post um, from there. Now when you're doing, um, when you're writing up the X sheet, are you doing all this on paper by hand or has th have things moved over digitally at all? It really depends on what production you're working for. Uh, Cartoon Network was all paper before pandemic time. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I was starting from paper, just, you know, having the big old, and it's like, it's hard to tell in the pictures, but these things are big. The sheets are very large. Um, so it went from paper to digital, and I just write in Photoshop with them now. Um, I know that there are other digital platforms that people will train for in order to, like, work the programs. I've heard, I've heard of companies doing them with Tune Boom Harmony and stuff, but um, I've not seen those with my own eyes yet, but I've heard tale of them. So basically you're just writing on these like you went on paper just in Photoshop. So it's pretty straightforward. It's probably the most analog that you can ask for <laughs> in terms of a pipeline in that way. So it's pretty easy to pick up um, in terms of like any software requirements that this the, the X sheets actually, you know, need, which is nice. It keeps things simple. <laughs> Nice and old school. Uh, could you guys talk a little bit about the process with working with the overseas studio, like how you guys fit in? I think um, you're a little better informed of this again. <laughs> I think we'll, uh, sure, I'll take this. Um, uh, <laughs> one of the things as a, as a supervising, you know, director, is you're um, in charge. Well, so far at Cartoon Network, you're in charge of retakes. At other studios, they have a retake department. Now retakes are basically, if that scene didn't work out, we figure out uh, if it wasn't animated well, if they didn't really follow what we asked them to do, or if we don't like what we asked them to do, we change it, send back new materials, and you know get a, a better take on that particular scene. And so um, basically what we're doing is revising the sheets, sometimes we'll revise the design, we'll revise the storyboard, we'll add new poses, we'll you know, we'll plus it, we'll, we'll do all these things um, in that sense. And so um, we're still shaping the picture uh, after we've sent it overseas. So there are, there's kind of a built into our schedule. There's a, there's a time for sending back what we call retakes and 
dealing with them uh, as they we go back and forth. Sometimes one scene I think we had on KO, we actually had to send back up to like four times, I think. It was, there was just oh. miscommunication on so many. You know, usually by, by um, the first take we get back is our work front. We call that a take one. We send it back, we're gonna try and get a take two. Um, you know, take three, take four, so on and so forth. And you really don't want to ever go past take three, honestly, because at that point, something is really wrong. You know, um, sometimes you just want to get on the phone and say, hey, look, we want to do it like this. Uh, but um, yeah, um, we're just still managing the picture and uh, um, taking a look at, at the information we gave them and reviewing it. And then also, um, I actually supervise my department so I'm handing out sections to people and then coming back and then I'm reviewing and then if we send it out uh, and it still comes back then I'm the one who has to deal with with that kind of thing uh, mm -hmm. in the retake department so um, yeah well since you were talking a little bit about retakes um, what I guess you can elaborate a little on that what are they and what are you looking for when you're reviewing Again, you want to you want to make sure that they followed what we we um, the directions we sent uh, because that's with our best intentions. We're trying to express, um, especially the vision of the creator and the supervising director, and um, you know the timing that that the, the the creator and the supervising director had in their head. And, and then sometimes it's up to us to determine the timing, uh, depending on the show. Again. Um, so what we want to make sure is that that take is what we wanted. Uh, that's first and foremost. And then, then after that, we can try and see, is there a better way to do this? Or they didn't follow it. So we, now it's more of a kind of taping and, you know, a, a fixed job. And so we need to give them more clear materials maybe, or we just need to ask them like, sorry, but you know, we gave you this and you did this. So can you please follow this? Uh, so it becomes kind of a back and forth in, in that sense. And um, again, it's more sculpting and, and, and making sure that the scene looks the way we saw it in our head. I think one of the biggest challenges about this job is, and echoing what Sarah said before, is like when we're writing this stuff down, we're, we're seeing it in our head. Because we come from animation, we're, we're picturing in our head that six frames of this movement will look the way in our head it, it yeah. should look. <laughs> based on the materials we sent. So sometimes when it comes back, you know, uh, maybe six frames wasn't enough. <laughs> and so we need yeah. to do a retake because let's give it more than that, you know. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, I think that's the, those are the, those are the things that we're dealing with in, in retakes, uh, essentially making sure that the information we gave them uh, is followed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's super interesting. Um, if we want, if, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, but one of the great things about it is that you get to meet the, the animation directors overseas and mm -hmm. develop relationships with them. And, and it's been interesting. Um, I've, I've actually had meetings with various crews uh, overseas and for different shows. And so it's kind of like, oh, nice to see you again, you know. And so, you know, you do develop a, a great kind of relationship. And then when they come visit, you get to see them, you know, visit in person and, they're coming from Korea or you know other parts of, of, of the world and it's a nice exchange from that perspective. That's really nice. It's truly an international uh, yeah. project and uh, collaboration. Um, if we uh, could step back into in-house, uh, how do you work with the other departments and what sort of challenges do you face? Well, <laughs> <laughs> because we're so toward the end of, we, we, we tend to overlap working with a lot of the different departments. Um, it's kind of funny because if, because we're basically the stop gate before things start to get ex really expensive. Cause once you start, <laughs> right. Animated, right. Once things start getting it, get animated, anytime you got to fix something, it's like, <laughs> you've got to shell out for it for you. So usually there's a lot of things as animation directors that we look out for because we are quite literally in the weeds going through these boards and these stories with a fine tooth comb. So, you know, sometimes you're working on a scene and you're like, hey, where did that prop just disappear to? It just 
disappears. So you have to figure out, like, you know, you have to talk to the story department and the design department to be like, oh, was it this meant to disappear? Should this be sitting on the table still? Why, where did it go? So you, you, you find, like, a lot of weird little problems and incongruencies that just kind of you know, by nobody's faults, really, just that fall through the cracks, and we just happen to notice because we're so dialed into what is happening frame by frame in these scenes that we see little mistakes like that. So often, you know, we're having to work with other departments to kind of solve problems that we're seeing that show up in, in our version, because sometimes a lot of stuff can be shown that looks really cool, but then when you kind of try to make it move, you're like, oh, this isn't gonna work. And then you have to figure out, it's a lot of problem solving. Um, so there's a lot of overlap with other pro departments that way, um, because you're basically all just trying to fix anything that's gonna become you know, ASAP before it can become a, a, a bigger mess later. Um, so that's a lot of what my experience kind of working with other departments is like, because you know, you, we're human. We make mistakes. <laughs> so we're finding that that out a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, I totally, I totally agree. And most of the time, it's uh, there's um, there's kind of like an for me, there's like an administrative thing when we're looking at the storyboard to make sure the labeling is right and continuity is there. And just like Sarah said, um, finding different inconsistencies and things of mm -hmm. certain scenes missing and others and usually you know uh it's not egregious but um it's, it could be the small things that you know save time and and money for sure uh, in that sense yeah. so I, when we were back in the studio pre you know pre-covid sometimes i would walk into the storyboard supervisor's office and be like hey is this here or or they would come in and be like hey we changed this we're gonna do this now in this scene and Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. It's like, um, yeah. because we're further at the end, nobody's really put everything together and we're kind of the first draft of what it's going to look like in a way. Mm -hmm. And then, so a lot of things can pop up that weren't caught before. So mm -hmm. it's also, it's also show to show. Every show is different and that's where teamwork is really important and mm -hmm. everybody really, you know, being in, on the same page and, and working together. Mm -hmm. is really important. Can you guys talk a little bit about, you know, a lot of people are asking us, like, how do you get to this career path? Can you guys talk a little bit more about, um, you know, your, your background and how you got here? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I speak for both of us when I say um, we went to school for animation. Like, 2, 2D animation was still a really practiced thing. When we both were in school, um, I fully expected to come out of it uh, you know, being able to find work and actually as a, like a 2D, traditional 2D animator. And that quickly changed just because, you know, these things change quickly. <laughs> um, because, you know, 3D became popular, um, you know, overseas productions became more and more cost effective. Um, but I was lucky enough to continue to practice 2D animation professionally by finding work uh, in Flash, in the program Flash, because that was, that was a program that had come around that made having domestic animators cost effective again. And we knew that it was going to buy overseas at least 10, 15 years before they could get a hold of the software, teach people how to use it, find people who could use it, etc. Um, so I was lucky enough to ride that wave of being able to still be a professional 2D animator. I was just working in Flash as opposed to being able to draw on paper. And that's pretty much how I learned how to do this work. Like you, you kind of have to be an animator to understand when you look at these storyboards, because anim animation, animation has a lot of principles, but so much of it is being able to read the feeling and the emotions and the acting that you're supposed to convey. And you really only get that <laughs> when you're, you know, you, you work as an animator. The, again, it's the subtle difference of, do you want an overshoot versus a slow end? Does this hand gesture need to be six frames or 10 frames? Like it's, it's being able to distinguish the nuances of that kind of work that makes 
like it's so necessary for this kind of thing because you you have to know that stuff you have to be able to visualize it in your brain and it's not easy <laughs> like you know you it's a lot of things that you have to be very good at imagining and internalizing and having practiced for a long time to know like I know that this will this is the kind of gesture and movement and timing that's going to work well for the scene and all that so yeah traditional tra you, you, I mean you you, you have to understand animation and animation principles to do this. There's, I really don't think there's a way around it, unfortunately. Everything Sarah <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as like a career, uh, so j yeah, just to back up, as far as a career thing, I mean, I definitely started off as, as an animator and, and a layout person. Um, uh, mm. But, um, and then definitely did the transition to Flash and animating in Flash and learning it and, and um, you know, really the uh, anchoring more knowledge in the digital pipeline and all those things. So you know, once you're able to, I think for me it was I, I was able to translate all that animation into you know this digital pipeline thing, and then this opportunity came up to do it on paper again, and it, I kind of felt like okay, yeah, I could do that. And also, so my first job again was on the Venture Brothers and. The people around me, the 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 supervisor at the time, uh, Miguel Martinez Jofre, and a yeah. few other a uh, few other people, Nick DeMeo, uh, Jennifer Batnich, and um, the you know we had we had experience. They had experience. It was kind of my first time doing it. I'd done a little bit before, but nothing like on a show. And so they were able to really teach me and and show me like how they would do it, and um, and that was great because I was able to be. I have to say, you know, there were, there used to, the budgets were bigger so that you could have a timing team in house. Some studios still have them, depending mm -hmm. on the, the, the budgets, but at, at Cartoon Network, one thing I, I kind of, I, I wish is that we had an in house timing team uh, because mm -hmm. we, we can solve a lot of problems that way. And, and also, mm -hmm. um, it's great to have like a back and forth. And, and so I learned that way. It was kind of learning on the job. And, uh, uh, and you know we just grew from there and my skills grew and and you know theirs did too and we were able to you know each show is different so you kind of have to establish uh, um, a timing language for the show um, a certain show has different dynamics than than others you know Venture Brothers is not going to be the same type of timing that a cartoony show might have and mm -hmm. so we're trying to kind of figure those things out it's great to be around other people to do that um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my that that was the way I came into it, uh, and then mm -hmm. from there, once you start getting used to it, you can apply the same principles, you know, as you you travel around and work at different on different shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another good point. Is that you kind of have to be mentored by someone to understand and start learning X sheets because I don't know why it's so under the radar, but it really is. So when I knew I wanted to start doing X sheets, like I had to seek people out. And Kinson, you were one of the people who mentored me early on in it too. It's like, you have to get someone to show you the ropes because I mean, I know that the guild will teach classes um, and some other, like there's other art schools that um, do like uh, continuing education for professionals that will give classes on timing, but you know, it still needs that that special <laughs> mentor in touch that really yeah. kind of gets you up to speed with what is going on professionally with this style of work. <laughs> and especially particular to your show and your project, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, every every show has a little bit something different. Their walk cycles might be, because it's We Bear Bears, their walk cycles might be, you know, yeah. a certain timing that KO doesn't have or... You know, the, a lot of these timing languages are things that you can, you know, you, you learn to adapt mm -hmm. to as well. And yeah, uh, yeah and that, that's one of the things that it is still mysterious. You know, the title sounds like great. And, you know, everybody thinks we're drawing all day. And to a degree we are. And we mm -hmm. have definitely. We definitely oh, yeah. did, you know. And, um, and uh, but we're basically, you know, directing the drawings. I like to always say that we're directing the drawings. And, and, Mm -hmm. and that we're giving life to the to the drawings and um uh yeah and it's still secret it's still this kind of un it's not like really taught at schools and and um i and and anytime i'm approached about a job it's always like uh 
we need we need timers for this thing. <laughs> it's not you know there's no time for training. There's no like let's explore and let's find the you know it's TV. So TV you're just kind of like let's make it happen. You know chop chop. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's still this kind of hidden. Um, and I'm hoping that we can really bring in more young people. And it's a viable. It's a very viable um profession you know it's like you can make a good living doing it i don't know if overseas studios are going to be closing down anytime soon or those relationships and as long as they're taking exposure sheets as the way to communicate the show there's going to be a job for somebody uh yeah. to do that you know mm -hmm. i want to dive into the q a uh since we have about like 10 15 minutes left uh, we did get a little bit of a later start um First off, uh, we were asking, I know you guys talked about mentorships are a really great resource. Uh, are there any other um, uh, resources you guys might recommend for getting into X sheets or is it like, hey, like keep reading more animation books, keep doing it? It's really just, you know, um, timing really is just animating, but you're just not doing all the drawings you're not doing all the keyframe drawings and in-between drawings for yourself so even if you just spend your afternoons frame by framing animation that you think looks really nice on youtube and studying it like that is more than what <laughs> personally speaking i had to learn from back when i was in, knew that i was interested in animation and i knew this was something that i wanted to pursue just familiarizing yourself with how things move why did that head turn looks so good is it because it was arced is it because the hair secondary is done really well like just understanding what good animation looks like and teaching yourself of that is probably the biggest thing that you can do for yourself because all x sheets are is just learning how to look at a timeline in a different way um it's really understanding the timing and how animation works that is the core fundamentals of this work that you just cannot <laughs> in any capacity. Do you guys have any advice on avoiding overworking or burnout? <laughs> I want to know this too. <laughs> yeah, like, pandemic, that's like, that's the multi-million dollar question of pandemic. If I could answer that, I could, uh, I probably wouldn't be on this call right now. I'd yeah, be, right? I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be swimming in my personal ocean. <laughs> so, no, but uh, um, yeah, I, I think you, you just, one thing is it's a very, our job is very solitary um, in how we, you know, we work a lot in our head. We work a lot. We, we literally start with a blank page and we have to finish it. You know, we have to fill it up with, with all this information. And, you know, it, 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 when you do sheet timing, it really, your brain does more. It, it has to transition from being able to look at how a drawing looks and how flipping, you know, or scrolling through drawings to see how a movement plays and all this stuff to like previewing in your head how that works. So there's literally like a mental thing that, and sometimes that can take some, take on some, some time for sure, but also it can take on some, some sort of anxiety sometimes like is it right is it not right you're triple thinking your, your stuff yeah. um and then also we're in a volume like our department is about it's very like it's volume based so it's like how many scenes can i get done by this and how many sheets can i get done by this point you know dealing with mm -hmm. deadlines so again you really have to learn where who you are <laughs> you know as an artist and um are you able to deal with you know deadlines in that way like every other department really uh, and uh yeah I, I don't know the the secret question just to really know yourself and pat yourself on the back when you can uh you know we're probably the most under how do i say ex um people don't know us that we actually exist like the mechanics you know like in a car or like f1 like the you're not really thinking about the guy in the back who screws on the wheel. You're always thinking about who drove the car and, you know, but mm -hmm. so I feel like we're more of a mechanic kind of, kind of guy. Um, so don't, don't expect really to be like, like a parade yeah. in your name. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't take this job because it's glamorous. It's, you yeah. don't get famous. On it. There's no glamor. Like it doesn't even have glamor in the sense that it's like, Oh wow, look at this beautiful drawing I did, you know, like right, you can't right, even, right. Do that with it because everything is you're in your head the whole time and it's 
it's the kind of, um, it's like driving. It's you're sitting for hours and hours at a time with very intense focus happening. <laughs> so it's, it's not like you're collaborating a whole lot on a consistent basis. It's, it's a lot of inward focus and that can be very hard sometimes. <laughs> well, you, you gotta be, you know, you gotta be nice to yourself and sometimes yeah. you know, take breaks, you know, and definitely for your, your eyes and, you know, get up, stretch, you know, you know, these kind of things. Um, but I, I think that whoever asked that question, I mean, it's really the essential question that we all face in TV animation is about yeah. burnout out and, and work in general, especially these days. Mm -hmm. you know? Very true. I think I got one more question before we go to our final question. Um, someone wants to know, is each production at Cartoon Network have their own team of timers and checkers, or is it like you guys are a department that every production has access to? Uh, it's interesting. It's kind of like the Wild West, I want to say, because <laughs> even though like, hey. I'm, I'm a rare exception, um, because this job is so rare, I'm kind of afforded a special in-house position as a sheet timer for a production, which is like unheard of for Cartoon Network. So I'm like, <sighs> but I've been able to double dip on like, but you know, the point being is that like, I'm kind of around to double dip and help out with other productions as they need it. Because like I started out, you know, being directly under Kimson on OKKO, OK and then from there it's like they sprinkled me over to We Bear Bears, and then it became Summer Camp Island, and then, you know, Infinity Train needs help, so you go talk to them, and then Steven Universe needs help, and then you go assist them, and, you know, Adventure Time needs help, so you go help Kimson, and, you know, it's basically just, like, if you want it and you can ask for it, like you can usually find it because there's not to say that there's a few few people who do what we do, but it's definitely hard to find someone that you can trust to do this job. <laughs> so it, you find a lot of people and a lot of timers and a lot of animation directors double dipping on other productions just because we all need the help. Um, I, I, I don't know if you that's a the best way of putting it, but it's definitely kind of what my experience with it has felt right, like. Right, 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 right. So yeah, from top top down, I guess to directly answer the question, every show has a super at Cartoon Network has a supervising uh, timing director or animation director. Um, mm -hmm. So one person for their department, they may freelance out some of that work um, and then oversee the retakes and all that. But every show, mm -hmm. from what I understand, does that has a, a overseas pipeline has their own um, person in house, um, but they don't have a department in house, um, but they do have a person in house. And then, yeah, Sarah, Sarah is, is in a unique position where she gets to work on other shows. I freelance on other shows as well, um, uh, you know, helping out. And, and also it's, it's great to just, you know, keep exercising your chops and, and, and getting mm -hmm. involved with another show and see how they work. Um, and see how their boards are done and stuff. So it's really, it, in that sense, the ecosystem that we have at Cartoon Network has really been, you know, um, um, uh, I guess, supportive and, and, and really beneficial in that mm -hmm. sense. But yeah, basically, we, it's not, we're not a separate department that they funnel through us. Each show has their own department. But then we kind of communicate with each other. And, yeah. And figure stuff out. That's another thing that actually helps with the burnout is being able to work on a different show and then you're like, oh, this animation is different, cool, and you get to take out like that style and then put in a different one and it's like very refreshing now. <laughs> oh wow, it's not that <laughs> it's, it's great, it's great because you get you get to really see like how other people see their own animation mm -hmm. like like no we don't do what you guys do we do what we do like oh okay cool <laughs> check it out you know. Um, that's really yeah. cool, guys. Um, well, thank you again for sharing all this knowledge. It's been wonderful. My final question that I've asked at every single webinar we've done is what's uh, the most important piece of advice you'd give an aspiring artist? It can be art related, it can be life related. No pressure. These are huge questions, jeez. Oh, I know exactly what it is. Do what you love. <laughs> Do what you love, because, like, there's been so many times where I've just 
been feeling very frustrated and all I have to do is look at some animation that's just really well done and I just I'm like oh I want to make something that pretty and then it's so easy to just go back and just start doing what I need to do again it's just you know find that thing that just makes your heart so excited that you know it's, it'll just take that little piece of magic again to just light you right up and then you know then you're good then you're smiling again and you're just like oh wow I, I remember now why I do this because I love it <laughs> yeah I, I totally I, I would say the exact same thing I think uh you know we have to stay inspired somehow you know mm -hmm. you, you find the things that inspire you uh I remember when I first started on on working in a studio, uh, I'd gone back to my alma mater and I'd met with uh, my teacher had um, Frank uh, jo um, Ali Johnson and Frank Thomas come by um, the studio. <laughs> this is how old I am. But they were still around. That's really cool. And I was like, you know, I, I for some I'd been working at um, at the studio uh, for maybe about two months. And so, but I had already felt this weight, you know, I was 22, I had already felt this weight of like the world and like, wow, I'm, I came out here to be an artist and now I'm just drawing what everybody else wants me to draw. You know, there's this, this kind of thing that I was going through. And so I asked them, I asked Ali, I was like, hey, so um, I'm working at the studio and I don't feel like my art is being, you know, I don't feel artistic anymore. And he was, and he just looked at me. <laughs> You know, and and, uh, and he said, you got to find something that you, basically what Sarah said, you got to find something that, that you love that works for you. And he's like, and basically he's like, for some people, it's religion. Some people, it's a walk in a park. For some people, it's music. And I was thinking about that. And I realized that all the, the old, the nine old men, the Disney nine old men, they all had all these other interests they were into. They had band, they were in bands. They were like in the trains and you know, and all this stuff. And when you look at, you know, animation people, I think they're, they're always involved with other things. There's always something else that they're very passionate about. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I also recommend that, you know, I, I really recommend to stay inspired, but pick from everything. It doesn't need to be always work all the time. If, if animation is what inspires you all the time, that's great too. Uh, but yeah, really, I think the best thing is to, to follow, you know, what, what really inspires you and then don't, don't give up on that, you know. Keep that going. Mm -hmm. well, Very thank, wise. Thank you both. Um, uh, that was so inspiring. Thank you so much, both of you, uh, for taking time from your busy schedule and giving all this advice and teaching us all about X sheets. That's really awesome. Uh, I mean, I mean it. It's really something that doesn't get talked about. Um, ever. So now it's going to be on the internet forever. Oh. <laughs> Forever. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys again. I uh, want to thank Jackie and Sally for helping me field questions and run this webinar. And thanks to everyone who tuned in. We're so happy to have you guys here. This is how we're able to keep doing webinars. Uh, for future panels and more information about Cartoon Network Studios recruiting, please check out our website, cartoonnetworkstudios.com and our Twitter and Instagram pages, CNS underscore recruiting. Uh, thank you everyone again, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Get filthy rich on you trick. I'm going to get filthy rich on you trick. I'm going to get filthy rich on you trick. I'm going to get filthy rich on you trick. I'm going to get filthy rich on you trick. I'm going to